Hi all you wonderful quilters, I'm Kathy with True Cotton Company. Look in the description box down below, you can find the address to the store as well as a link. Today we're going to be working on making sh little shamrocks. We're going to use the Cupid, I'm using the 5-3 Cupid from Silly Moon Quilting Rulers. And this makes little hearts and then we'll put three of these little hearts together to make cute little shamrocks. I thought first, and I worked really hard making this cute little nine patch quilt. This is using five and a half inch blocks and just two fabrics and laying it out in a checkerboard pattern. And then making this, but as I was quilting it, um, I was using this lighter green thread and it's beautiful, but it was hard to see the quilting as it's happening, so I thought this darker would make it prettier. But I just used those hearts. I did some swirls and pebbles. And maybe you can see the texture a little better on the back. Oh, it yeah. shows yeah. off. But that's what we're going to be doing today. Now to make my little nine patches, I do like working in strips. And so I cut five and a half inch by width of fabric. And then cut those down to sixteen and a half inch strips and so I needed you know enough for your greens and your and then I just subcut these into five and a half and that left me with these pieces and then I could lay them out into nine patch blocks but you can use any size of nine patch blocks you like just varying up that you're going to have two with the darker color and the lighter and then you're going to do one with the lighter and four darkers so just uh, that's the way it lays out. Or you can just lay out your squares if you had charm packs that you really like and make a checkerboard like this. Hmm. But it makes a really quick, easy project for St. Patrick's Day. And it's a really fun time for a little green. Now I did um, try it with and without using the Supreme Slider, which is a little silicone sheet that's sticky on one side. And you can rinse off this side and make it sticky again after it's been on your machine. And I was surprised how I used to use the Supreme Slider when I was doing domestic quilting. And it's been a while since I've used it and I tried it again just the other day and it really helps the quilt glide over. It was surprising the difference. Mm -hmm. It is a little expensive but it really does help. And so here I've got just a <coughs> fat quarter of a solid dark green so you can see I love these Wonder Grip gloves. They are really nice and grippy. I think they did gardening gloves first and now they make quilting versions which I think are very similar. So now we'll just come over here and just want to show you all the quilting. When I do this I usually bring the needle up and down and then pull up the bobbin thread so I've got the bobbin left a little longer and then I will just do some stitches doing little micro movements to make a little knot hmm. and just want to knot that and I've been quilting that piece and I can see a little length there. I do need to grab my gloves because these make it a lot easier. And then I do have, you with the ruler comes a little grippy tape and I have the grippy tape on both sides of the ruler. You don't need this as much when you're doing it on the long arm. It can help, but it really helps when you're doing the domestic quilting. And so I use these little pin mores and these flower head pins, which we have. I'll link all this down below for you. We don't have the flower head pins, but you can use your favorite pins. I like how strong these are. Now, I've been out of practice since getting my long arm with domestic machine quilting, so I'm going to do my best here. But you're just going to follow, and this makes, it's a 5-3, and so it makes a 3-inch heart and a 5-inch heart if you follow the outside. I'm working with the 3-inch hearts. And you just want to stitch along 
the ruler and hold it in place. And I like to start at the bottom. That way you don't have to track back over yourself. It's not a big deal. I did a few of those on the other one where I tracked back over learning the process I like. And I have to move my pins out of the way. You could spray baste. I just have lots of these pins and and now you want to bring this around and you want to hit a quarter inch away and we did just get some of these dudes in which have different markings and this is your quarter inch tool and you just hold it here and you can see I don't know if you can see that but we're right about a quarter inch away hmm. using that tool and that lets me know where the needle will hit if I keep everything straight and don't move it around. And so we just stitch around, following that. And there we are. We've made one little heart. So cute. Now we're just gonna line up another heart because we're making three. And I just let it come right off from the edge of that and we're just going to hold it really steady and quilt and of course when you're doing it you'll use a thread that blends in a little better I'm wanting you to be able to see it so we've got this lime green which is what I used quilting the other one where I had lighter fabric and it was really pretty. And just remember, just hold steady. But you don't want to hold too firm. You want to be able to slide. It's about finding that balance. And let's see if I left myself room for another heart here. I know on some of them I have to do partial hearts because I didn't have the space. We'll see. This is going to work. I think I've got everything here. Hmm. So we're going to come along. Right like that. Let me go ahead and clip this thread. Get that out of the way. And now we want to get this in position. Threads sticking to me and <laughs> everything. All right, we get in position and now we just follow along this art ruler. Mm. And once you get right there, you've made a little shamrock. You could make a four leaf clover if you wanted to and continue on, but I usually just make a little kind of stem. Hmm. And it doesn't have to be anything much. And then I'll kind of kind of trace alongside that edge. And then you want to just do a little, I just do a little curvy. You can do some swirls, pebbles, any of your favorite meandering <laughs> designs. To come over and do another set. And of course, depending on the batting you're using, different battings have different size spacing that you can leave. I just make sure it doesn't overlap over here and I can see that I'm not. I've got a nice clean space. Just curve around. And then like I said you can measure with your dude and see where you need mm. to line up there. But I just kind of follow with my eyeball usually. 
And the nice part when you're doing it on your domestic machine versus the little long arm is uh, you get to put the ruler in the position you want to and move the quilt in the direction you prefer sewing in and find the way that works. Even though I do like practicing for multiple positions just to get comfort. And you can see just coming along here, we're starting to get another beautiful little shamrock. It's so cool. And I, now this isn't shocking to me. I have a pretty good idea. My mom does lots of genealogy and I have a good idea my, where my family's from. But I did confirm with some DNA recently. I do have a good bit of Irish in me, so. I didn't get any red hair or anything like that, but I do know I have 20 some percent Irish. Hmm. And since I'm not more than 20 some percent of anything, <laughs> I'm a blend of a lot of Europe. Oh, I think I ran out of bobbin. <laughs> I did not win that game of bobbin chicken, you all. You lost. I lost. But I think this gives you a good idea of what we're doing here. Oh. It makes really cute little shamrocks, really cute hearts, and you could do the bigger size. We also have it, this is the 5'3", as I keep telling you, but we do have a 6'4", as well. And these do come in quarter inch and um, eighth of an inch and to measure your rulers while we're here and I don't have any quarters with me but you want to put quarters right here where the bar like where the shortest depth is if two quarters fit under there you need an eighth of an inch if you can fit four quarters under there it's the quarter inch if you don't know if your machine's a high shank or low shank machine and you want to measure that with the quilt sandwich underneath because that's how you're that little extra height is how we're actually using the rulers. We don't use the rulers without a quilt underneath it. So, if you're doing it, do highly recommend Supreme Slider, nice grippy gloves. And get these rulers with the extra little grippy tape. It makes it so much easier. And I'm really excited that we've got our little dudes in stock. So if you're sewing this week, I hope you do better than me win that game of bobbin chicken. Do keep having fun, and we'll see you back next week. Have a great day. Bye.